You're listening to Hawk Talk. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Hawk Talk. It has been a while, folks, um, but we're excited to be back after a couple months off. Um, we're finally in person again, no longer on Zoom, um, still maintaining social distance uh, and all that. Um, but yeah, it's been a few months. We've entered our new school year, so we've decided to call this Season 2, Episode 1. Um, we're going to have a new series of episodes. Um, today, we're just going to talk about uh, COVID updates, fundraiser updates, um, talk about our, our training plans for this fall. Uh, we got a ton of stuff to do, so uh, let's get right to it. So like Zach said, it's really nice to be back. Um, I'm going to have to to share a little story with everyone real quick. Zach doesn't even know I'm going to say this, but uh, we are a little rusty. It has been a while since we've been able to do this, and uh, we had a little issue tonight. We had to fire the guy who works the soundboard. Um, apparently, he forgot to hit record, and uh, <laughs> this is the second time that we have done this episode. So, hey... If nothing else, you're going to get even better, higher quality work. Yep. So uh, as Zach said, we are back. Uh, the guys are back at school. Uh, there was some pretty aggressive protocols that everyone's followed. Everyone's been tested. People continue to be tested. And I can say, unlike Notre Dame, North Carolina, Miami of Ohio, we have not had any outbreaks. So a uh, round of applause to our medical staff and to our athletic trainers who have worked very hard. I apologize for any problems we've caused them, but I think everyone's good right now. And uh, sooner than later, we're gonna at least be back out there training and doing things like that. And I, I just like to throw out um, the whole training staff, um, St. Anne's faculty who did a really nice job with the COVID testing. Um, it wasn't long at all. Um, it was really convenient for the students. And as Tim said, there weren't any huge outbreaks out of the whole student population. There were only two positive tests out of out of everybody. So it really well done on their part. Yeah. And those two people were quarantined immediately yep. and nothing, nothing came of it, yep. which is, is amazing to see. So, uh, why don't we give you a couple updates on what's going on? Uh, you probably know this, but the NCAA has canceled most fall sports, which of course included soccer. I do understand why some of the division one football programs are going. Those things make more money than your average medium sized business. And uh, let's not get in the way of that. But unfortunately, with us not bringing in crowds of 100,000 every game, you know, only 98,000, uh, we, we were canceled. Uh, it wasn't just us. It was obviously the NE10, but all the surrounding conferences. And then the NCAA killed a lot of things, too. Mm -hmm. So it makes sense. We get it. We understand. But the good news is. If nothing else, we get to train the guys and we will get to play some scrimmages. We don't know yet if we'll be allowed to have any fans there. Um, I'm guessing no to start, but maybe by the end we'll be able to have a few. So we'll keep you updated on all of that. I will tell everyone and Zach, and Zach's heard this before, but one of the goals that Bruno and I have put in place for this new type of season is the fact that we will be playing scrimmages. We have enough guys that we can suit up two teams with subs. Bruno will coach one, I'll coach the other. So you guys can offer your condolences to Bruno on the losses. Um, and then we can uh, actually have a real game day, referees, 90 minute game, hopefully pregame music, scoreboard. Uh, maybe we can come up with some recorded sounds of fans in there. Um, we can get uh, Zach's mom to record her yelling at <laughs> different players and the referees and things like that. It'll be just like normal. Um, oh, I'll give the referee that. a hard time just to keep in practice. Um, <laughs> but but the good news is at least we're going to be able to do yeah. something, and it keeps the guys busy, and it honestly is just going to make us a better team. Yeah. So uh, I do know, Zach, uh, you guys were allowed to do a little bit of training, obviously following rules, social distancing, yeah. no large groups, things like that. But uh, – How'd that work out? Because coaches were not allowed and Bruno and I follow the rules. Yeah, um, worked out fantastic actually. We arrived on campus early August, mid August, around like the 10th, 9th or 10th I think. Um, everybody coincidentally moved in on Sunday, I think it was like August 9th or something. And we began optional, like to stress optional, nobody was forced to be there. Right. Practices, 
but we actually had really, really good attendance, and I'm really proud of my teammates for um, showing up when they didn't have to. We had a couple days where we did a morning session, an evening session, um, and for the last couple weeks, we've been doing that, and we've had small groups uh, doing drills and stuff. Um, we can't do more than 10 players in a group, so myself, Spencer, and Jaden, um, we each kind of ran our own um, station, had the guys rotate through, and it's been it's been awesome, and, uh, which has it, it's really gone well. And um, we're gonna get to this a little bit later, but the the new guys who have come in, um, the, fre the I think I believe it's six freshmen. Uh, we also have a couple walk-ons practicing with us, and um, the two transfers have really came in and and really elevated our practice level. Um, is it's not a, it's not even about like whether or not they're gonna see the field. It's like they're injecting energy for the rest of our guys too and picking up um, picking up our practice base as well. So that's a shout out to those new guys too. And it, it's a great thing to know that the program is coming together to a point where when you guys could be doing other things, you're out there training. Yeah. And, yep. and one of the things, so if you're watching us on, on YouTube right now, you will see I am holding a lovely St. Elton Hawks face mask. Everyone has them now. These are the latest trend. These are the Beanie Babies of the 2020s. <laughs> um, but we're pointing this out for a couple reasons. One, obviously, everyone on campus is wearing a mask. Mm -hmm. Students, faculty, staff. When you guys weren't training, you had on a mask. Yep. When you were working, uh, walking to the fields, you had on a mask. Well, the school is doing a fundraiser. And we will include in this video link to that mm -hmm. fundraiser. But it's pretty easy, and I'm challenging everyone who listens, all of my ex-players, all of the alumni, and uh, even if you played for Coach Cannon or Coach Ramsey or anyone else, they have a, a fundraiser where for a $25 donation, you get a St. Elsom Hawks mask, and a student will get a St. Elsom Hawks mask. So you know they had enough of these made for the student athletes. And I guess they were pretty popular. And someone had the brilliant idea, and I mean that sincerely, yeah. to do a fundraiser. For every $25 you donate, you get a mask and a student gets a mask. Donate $50, you get two masks. Yeah. Donate $75, you get three. You're all pretty smart. You can keep going down the path with that. But we are putting the challenge out there. This goes through the month of September. Yeah. When you donate, please notate men's soccer. We are tracking this. And we want to be the top team in the school. We want to bring in the most money and get the most students masks. Yep. Um, yeah, I just like to throw out that it's a literal win-win for everybody here. Um, not only are you giving money to our program, which we really could use. It's going to a lot of great stuff. Um, you're also getting a mask in return. And it's not just one of these um, plain navy blue masks. This was just the original model. They're also uh, got some cool designs on it with the St. A's logo um, in this fundraiser. So it's honestly a win-win. Um, feel good. And you're going to get a mask that you're going to be wearing for the next, who knows, few weeks, few months, whenever Hopefully this is all over. Hopefully not too long. Hopefully not too long, but you never know. You know, it is going to be winter and it's going to be flu season. And yep. apparently these don't just work with COVID. They work with regular flu, too. So that's good. Cool. So, you know, <clears throat> for those of you who have been listening to us for a while, you know, we, we've had 10 episodes in season one. And this is episode one of season two. But one of our favorite episodes was introducing you guys to Silas Brown, who is yep. our Team Impact uh, teammate. And if you follow us on social media or if you know Silas, you know that he had to have some surgery a couple weeks ago. He had to have his tonsils out, his adenoids out, and some uh, work done in his throat. And uh, it's something that we were, you know, obviously all concerned about, and we hope that Silas did well. But as of 5 p.m. today, I talked with Melly, Silas's mom, and I'm happy to update that he is doing great. Mm -hmm. None of the complications that they were concerned about uh, came up. So he, he made it through this very, very well. Uh, very happy for him. The best news is as soon as things clear up, we can get that guy back out there on the field with us. He's got a new gait trainer, uh, which helps him walk. We've seen videos. Uh, Matt has been showing him some of his soccer skills from his college days. And uh, he's in the backyard working pretty hard with them, scoring goals. Uh, we can't wait to get him out there. And then obviously, when we bring Silas out, we get our little buddy Atlas out there with us oh, too. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. Melly. Matt, Pepper, 
hey, we can't wait to get you guys out there again. We really miss all of you. Yeah. Um, as soon as it's clear and as soon as everyone is feeling secure being out there again, you got to get out there with us. We can't wait. So um, one of the things that we're known for as well is our lightning round. And when Zach and I were talking about doing this episode, I told him not to worry about it, which I hope he knew me better than that. And he knew that I was going to throw it out there. And if you've been paying attention, you do know this is take two. So he does know that. So we don't want to take the lightning round away from you guys. We want you to have a chance to hear some questions off the top of our heads. Wait. We are going to fire questions back and forth at each other, and we're going to try to stump each other a little bit. Um, so if you're ready, Zach, I'm going to throw it to you and let you oh, ask gosh. the first question. <laughs> All right. Um, so you discussed how we are going to have some pretty formal scrimmages, inter-squad scrimmages. Um, we have 30, 29, 30 guys this year, um, so enough to have two teams of 14 or 15. Um, and it, obviously Tim just said it's his team versus Bruno's team. So I'm wondering, um, who is your first pick going to be when the time comes to pick teams? Interesting question. <laughs> um, I'm going to pause for a moment and let everyone think about the dilemma that would be going through my head right now. Cue the Jeopardy noise. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and then those who know me know that there is no dilemma at all and know that I'm just filling time right now. Brian Underhill, without a doubt, I am a goalkeeper. <laughs> He is a goalkeeper. He is a monster. He is slightly larger than the frame of the goal. Yeah. I'm putting him on the field first and then filling in from there. Yeah. I, I definitely agree. Defense, goalkeeping, that's a strong starting point. Um, but if I was a coach, I'd definitely look at um, one of our maestros in the middle of the field, Kevin, Kyle, uh, Pat, any one of those guys I'd look to draft first. No doubt. And it's going to be nice that we are uh, able to get everyone on the field. Um, yep. Yep. You know, we, we play two holding mids and we have three incredible holding midfielders. Yep. So now we get to start all three of them. So it's going to be great. Mm -hmm. So, OK, let's go along the same lines with my question to you. Um, you've been able to train with with guys and, and we've mentioned that even some uh, future walk ons are going to be uh, or have been training with you. Yep. Who's impressed you the most so far? Um, to me, Mike Fortin has impressed me the most out of the new guys. Um, you can't even tell that he was at a different school last year. He's fitting in so well with our team. And he also jumped up if you uh, – well, we actually haven't had a pod podcast yet. I was going to say if you watch our podcast about the recruits. But he was coming up from Division Three St. Joseph's up in Maine. He's jumped up a whole division to D2 now. Um, and you can't even tell, like, he's not even phased by the, uh, the transition. He's doing really well. He's a left back, left footed player. Um, he, in our, in our little games we've been doing, he's getting up and scoring goals. He's also playing really good defense. So he's impressed me a lot. Um, I'm also going to throw out Joe Sway cause he'd kill me if I didn't say his name on this, but he's actually been, um, doing real well too. And the guys, the guys really love him so far. So I think it's good. Those guys both have a lot of NCAA experience, mm -hmm. so it's not, the same shock for them coming over to the school. Um, Zach did mention in an upcoming episode, we will go through each of the recruits. Mm -hmm. We will interview them, maybe ask them some goofy questions like this as well. So make sure you're keeping an eye out for those. Yeah. So Zach, another question for you, and I know we're going to start running short on time soon. So let's throw this one out there. There was a recent award that came out from the NE10, 19 student athletes from St. Anselm College were on that award list. Were you one of those guys? I was. Um, it's two years now, I've gotten the um, ADA Division II um, Scholar Athlete Award. It's for students who um, have done two years in college, um, have a 3.5 GPA or higher, and play on a uh, varsity athletic team. Um, so I've been really working hard in the classroom um obviously shout out to my mom on that keeping me on my toes um but definitely a lot of hard work and um, i'm sure a bunch of my teammates coming up are gonna get that award this coming year too turning into juniors so yeah so one of the things is you have to be a student for two years so yep. kevin jordan there you go the challenge is thrown to you there you go 
So, hey, guys, like I said, this is going to be a quick episode. Um, we just wanted to make sure we reached out to you and got a hold of you. Please, if you have the ability, consider donating. Uh, the link will be on there. If you're only listening and you can't get to YouTube, email me, timfield at ansom.edu. Uh, I will give you that link. I will forward it to you. Let's show everyone yep. that men's soccer is the best at this, that we really are. Tim and Zach are the kings of QVC or Home <laughs> Shopping Network. Um, maybe someday we'll be as famous as Mike Rowe. Who knows? We'll see. Hey, donate, donate, donate. Like this video, subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Thanks. Take care, everyone.